In this class, we're going to think about how you use the cast diagram in radians rather than degrees. So you can't go very far with trigonometry without seeing the cast diagram, and you can't go very far without switching from degrees into radians. Quite a lot of trigonometry is done in radians, much to the dislike of students everywhere. But that then means that you've got to reconceptualize some concepts you've already learned, like for example the cast diagram in radians. So it's not particularly difficult, but it can be confusing at first. So I'm going to assume that you've already met the idea of radians and you've already met the idea of the cast diagram. Um, if not, then it's probably worth checking out a class on those first and then coming back to this class. But basically we've got this thing that we call the, the cast diagram, um, which is a way of checking where the sine and the cosine and the tangent function where they're positive and negative, and we use it to solve uh, trig equations and for various other uh, purposes. So the cast diagram, you know, looks like this. So at this point, I'll, ass I'll assume that you're familiar with the cast diagram. So we draw the cast diagram in degrees, zero to 90 degrees for the first quadrant, 180 degrees, and then just carrying on all the way around, going up in these sort of 90 degree um, increments. So quadrant one, two, three, four. So the all quadrant, the sine quadrant, the tan quadrant, and finally the the cosine quadrant. Okay, so that's how we generally start by learning the, the cast diagram. I'm just going to try and straighten up my cast diagram. So we learn it in degrees, and, that, and that's fine for doing all trig questions that are in degrees, but once you switch to radians, trying to use the cast diagram in degrees, if you're working a question in radians, um, just becomes really confusing. So it's better, you can do it, but it's better to reconceptualize this um, visual, which is a really useful thing um, in, in radians. So if you think about it, I mean, I'm assuming again that you've already met radians. If not, basically pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. Okay, that's basically the key relationship between degrees and radians. So if you're not familiar with radians, that's where I'm going to be getting all the, the rest of what I'm going to talk about from. Basically, it's a way of converting, this is a way of converting degrees to radians, and radians are just another way of measuring angles. So we could reconceptualize this here as being pi in radians. So this would be 180 degrees, but pi radians. 90, obviously, is half of 180, so that must be half of pi. So we just call this guy pi by 2. And then 270 is 3 times 90, so it must be 3 times pi by 2. So that gives us 3 pi by 2 radians. And then by the time we get to 360, we've done a full circle. That would be twice 180, which is back to um, uh, two, well, it's 2 pi uh, radians. So that, that's quickly how we convert our cast diagram from degrees to radians. So it's not particularly difficult. But just remember as well that the number pi in the use here is still actually the number pi. So, you know, like approximately 3.14 blah blah blah. It is still the number pi. This is going to be an approximate symbol. So pi is still that number, but sometimes when you're working with radians, you're working with pi divisions, like pi by 2 is 90 degrees, so that's a nice neat way of doing it. But if we had, say, 91 degrees, that wouldn't be pi divided by something, that would be a decimal. So although we'd write these in these compact pi forms, this is still 3.14. This is 3.14 radians. This would be half of that, and this is twice that. So sometimes when you're working a question, a trigonometry question, you're going to have what I call these like friendly versions of radians, these friendly pi multiples. But sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're going to have decimal versions of radians, and that's really why I'm making this class, right? Because that's where the confusion comes in. When you suddenly don't have the friendly, familiar pi versions to work with, and you're like, why, why am I getting these decimals? Where are they coming from? But it's not really that much of a leap. So we just take our cast diagram, set up in the same way with the usual quadrants. But we're just going to think of this as the number 3.14. You don't need to be too accurate with this, so we, it's, it's fine to call it 3.14 or thereabouts because remember, when you're using the cast diagram, you're not generally using it in a very precise way. You're using it just to put a check 
mark in the different quadrants as part of some other process like solving a trig equation or something like that. So we don't need to be like super accurate. Calling that 3.14 radians is definitely good enough. That must mean then that this would be half of 3.14, which is roughly 1.5-ish, somewhere about there. So we can say this is approximately 3.14 radians. This would be approximately 1.5. Again, that's not fully accurate, but that's absolutely fine. So we're starting at zero, going to 1.5 radians, 3.14. So they're going up in 1.5 radian chunks, basically equivalent of 90 degrees or pi by two in the more um, compact version of the radians. So this would basically, this one here would be this one plus that one. So it's gonna be approximately um, 4.6 radians. But again, it's just to get like a rough feel for what it's gonna be, it doesn't have to be too accurate. And finally, this one would be double this one. So it's gonna be around 6.2 radians. And that's really all you need for reconceptualizing the cast diagram from degrees to friendly radians to decimal radians. These red ones and these ones are the same. It's just that we can write these in their more exact value, compact, multiple of pi form, but the questions are often gonna be decimal versions. It's basically when you're working with multiples of what are called the, com called the common angle, so 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, that's when you're gonna have nice friendly versions, multiples, divisions of pi. So 30 degrees, for example, is um, pi by six radians. 45 degrees is pi by four radians, etc. But if you suddenly change these from the friendly numbers to say 63 degrees, well, that's not gonna be pi by something, that's gonna be a decimal version of radians. 63 degrees is up in here somewhere in the first quadrant, so you know that as a decimal, that's gonna be between zero and 1.5. So this is probably gonna be, yeah, like some, some number between those values basically um, in its radian form, okay? So that's, that's all you really need to know, just how to reconceptualize the, the cast diagram in degrees to friendly radians, and also to their decimal less friendly version of radians. Some students might argue that all versions of radians are non-friendly. That's probably a little true.